Good morning, church. Take your Bibles and go to uh, chapter number six. It's Saturday morning, and we will look at the final exploits of, of a man by the name of Daniel. Again, a fascinating figure. His whole life spent in politics and in ministry, and God used him in so many various ways. We have to realize that as we look at chapter number six, he's probably in his mid-80s, possibly even 90s. And so he's an older gentleman. When he uh, was put to pastor for maybe 20 years or so, we don't know what happened in his life. But when he was raised back up by Belshazzar and said, you're number three in the kingdom, meant nothing because the kingdom fell that night. He's given these riches, so what? Here comes the Medes and the Persians. They'll take whatever they want. And so the, the kingdom changes hands from the Babylonians and it was really, I hate to say it because nothing is ever peaceful because that means Belshazzar was killed. Many of his, his people at that party were killed. It, but it was a peaceful overthrow, if you will. It wasn't like armies destroying one another. Uh, the, the Babylonians, I guess, were tired of the leadership just kind of opened the gates and let the, the Medes and Persians come in because they were going to be destroyed if they didn't. And so here's this king parting away, hit, partying away his kingdom as he parties it's like who we don't care who's outside the gates we they can besiege us all we want we're going to have a party and the kingdom fell that uh, that night and uh, in verse 30 and 31 of chapter 5 it says that very night Belshazzar king of the Chaldeans was slain Darius the Mede received the kingdom being about 62 years old and it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps governors, leaders, uh, officials, that the satrap might give account to them so the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because of an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So that night the king comes in there's old Belshazzar, and these people are partying. They're going through there, and all of a sudden, everything becomes somber. What Daniel prophesied was going to happen from that reading on the wall happened. Belshazzar is no more. The kingdom is over to the Medes and the Persians. I'm sure they looked at Daniel, this 80-year-old man, and saying, uh, who are you? And you've got this nice, beautiful robe on. He's got this great big old pendant around his neck. And maybe he asked some of the other people, who's that guy? And they told him who he is. He's just a wise man, the head of the magicians. You know, he, he foretold what was going to happen here. You guys fulfilled a prophecy he just got through making, da, da, da. But the king was fascinated with him. And so the king kept him in government. And so even though he's old, uh, he's very useful. And he, he got to noticing Daniel, and he recognized Daniel was a man who was a man of integrity, loyal to the king, uh, faithful. He, he, he was observant of his own religious rights without being condemning of other people's rights. And he, he just recognized that. And he gave thought that he would put Daniel over all these satraps. In other words, he would be kind of the secretary of state, if you will. Well, of course, the other guys uh, just thought, no, uh, we don't like that. And so it says look, in verse 4, so the governors and the satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find a charge or a fault because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault found in him. He wasn't found bad-mouthing the king or the policies of the kingdom or being rebellious. He also wasn't given in to anything nefarious. He was a, a godly man, and he, wouldn't, he was not going to go against what God had taught him. And so they couldn't find anything. So basically what they said is, we're not going to find anything. This guy has no ambition to be anything but what he is. He has no desire for wealth. He's no desire for power. There's, he's just faithful to what he does. So if we're going to find fault, we're going to have to do it in his religion. And so here's what they do, and you can read the rest of the story. They, they come to the king and say, King, we, we need to kind of rally everybody together. And so 
What we think is, is uh, we need to have a petition that for 30 days, no one can pray to any God except to the king. That, that, that's it. Why this king would do that, again, flatter, I, I don't know. But they basically said, we've talked to all the satraps. We've talked to, well, they didn't talk to Daniel, I'm pretty sure. But the king signs that into a decree. And Daniel, he knew it was the decree. But again, Daniel's faithful in everything except that to the king, except that which violates his conscience with God. And so three times a day, Daniel kept praying. Morning, he'd go home at lunch. He'd open up the doors facing to the east towards Jerusalem, and he would pray. Then in the evening, he would pray. And when he was charged for that, he said, yeah, that's what I did. So they come back to the king and said, man, we found a man who in your kingdom has violated that law. And the law of the Medes and Persians cannot be violated, cannot be changed. So the king couldn't just say, well, I, I'm going to forgive that. You know, we, we have presidents when they're going out that basically just wipe off people's, they, they just pardon whatever they want to pardon. This king couldn't do that. And so the law said, according to their decree, that whoever did that was going to be thrown into the lion's den. And the king tries to get him off. The tree, king tries to find a loophole to get him off, and he can't. And, and Daniel doesn't even worry about it. And, and the king was greatly distressed. And the king said, Daniel, I, I know that your God's going to protect you, but I've got to do this. And so they take him and have him thrown into the lion's den. In verse 16, it says, So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke to Daniel, said, Your God, whom you serve continually, he'll deliver you. What a thought. Here's a pagan king so impressed with this 80-plus-year-old man. That, you know, he, he just he is so impressed with him. He says, I, I've watched you, Daniel. You're a man of faith. And I'm confident that your king, is your, your God is going to deliver you, that you'll be okay. So he has him thrown into the lion's den. This, read the rest of the story. It says the king goes home. He doesn't sleep that night. He doesn't eat. He fasts. doesn't give himself over to any pleasures. Then it says very early in the morning, verse 19, the king arose very early in the morning, as early as he could. He went in haste. And kings don't usually go in haste. They go at their leisure went down to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. And the king spoke and said these words to Daniel. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? He believed, but he didn't really believe. He, your God is, is a good God. and I, I believe he's going to do that. But he gets there and says, Daniel, did it come true? Has your God really delivered you? And then Daniel answers to the king, O king, live forever. Uh, the king honored Daniel by being there and the things he said about Daniel and, and Daniel being the kind of man that we all ought to be, even if our government isn't what it ought to be. He gave dear respect. May you live forever, king, for you, you care about your people. You care about me. You care about things like this. And you've been good to me. May you live forever. You're a, you're a good man, and I, and I appreciate your, your faithfulness to me. And he says, My God sent an, his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I've done no wrong before you. In other words, I've not been unfaithful to you. I, 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 my God has just proven that I've done no fault. And, and by the way, I'm not against you. you know, I, I'm, I'm going to serve my God the way I'm supposed to, but I am not against you. The king rejoiced. He was so excited. He honors Daniel and brought Daniel out, and, and, and he wrote to the other people uh, of the kingdom, anybody who, who disparages the God of Daniel, anyone who speaks evil is going to be destroyed and so forth. And then those men who brought this all about, the king had them 
thrown into the lion's den. And, and this proves they were really hungry. They, it wasn't that they weren't hungry, so they didn't, you know, or Daniel was just a tough old bird and they didn't want to eat him. It says that before they could even get down into the den, the lions were pouncing on them and they and were destroyed. So ends the story of Daniel. It says in verse number 28, So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. And so he lived to probably, you know, a ripe old age of 90-ish or so. And God used him all of his life. What a man. What a man of faith. And he started off wanting to be faithful in the things that he ate and making sure that he didn't violate any of God's laws. And even in a pagan culture, he prospered. But it cost him on many occasions. Let's pray together. Father, stories like this just overwhelm our hearts to look and to see how you have transpired uh, and, uh, and allowed Daniel to, to be who he was and have the power that he had. It's just amazing. You blessed him in so many regards. May we also be found faithful. And Father, we recognize that being found faithful does not always mean that things are going to work out, that lion's mouths are going to be shut. But sometimes, Father, just being faithful means that we're going to have to, to suffer martyrdom. And if that is the case, we want you to be glorified. Bless you for being so kind to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.